I'm going to talk about creativity this morning, but I've never really thought of myself as a creative person. I'm that person who, you know, have you ever been to a workshop where they break and they say, so during the break, um, write a poem or draw a picture or make a collage of some sort of your experience so far? And I just want to run from the room. That's me. I am not a creative person. I mean, who wants to come back and be embarrassed with your stick figure drawings, right? Sitting next to the person who has this finely crafted picture of uh, what they've experienced in the workshop. I used to really love to create things. When I was a small child growing up on a farm, I used to spend a lot of time outdoors and I would pick up feathers and stones and cattails and milkweed pods, all kinds of things, and I'd bring them back and glue them together, maybe spray them with some gold paint or something, right? And then I would make centerpieces <laughs> for our dining room table, plop a candle in the middle, you know, and give it to my mom and say, here, mom, we can use this for dinner. And um, they were rarely used, probably because they were such fire hazards, now that I can see uh, you know, what my creations were really like from a different perspective. But I used to love to make them until one day when my best friend, Mary, came over to our house. And she looked at the centerpiece on the table, and she said, wow. That is so ugly. I can still hear her voice. And who among us has not had an experience like that where someone has had that negative of a reaction to something we have created? As a minister, one of the ways I get to be creative these days is uh, through the this, this spiritual practice of preparing worship and um, writing sermons. <clears throat> and because I still have a hard time seeing myself as a creative person, I have a, a, a poem that I keep next to my laptop on my desk. Uh, it's called Each New Day, and it's written by the Reverend Peter Fredericks, who um, may also have been having, uh, feeling the same way about his sermons. And his poem goes like this. Why is this blank page staring back at me? Mocking, like an affliction and fraught with dread. How can it hold such sway, this simple emptiness? Might it instead be a gift left on my doorstep overnight, waiting to be broken open with the dawn? A present, eager to emerge if only I had the sense to hold the paper over a candle flame, its lemon juice message appearing like magic clear and true. Each new day is like this. Pure air, devoid of density, but for the weight of our own invention. Birds do not worry about the morning or fret the rising sun. They wait, expectant, until its rays kiss their downy necks. And then stretching, they turn to face the day and sing. And every time I read this poem, I'm reminded that creativity is the natural order of life, just like the bird who sings in the morning. Natural order of life. Life is energy, pure creative energy. And when we turn the face the day and sing, or when we create something new, 
It is really what we're born to do. The Unitarian process theologian Henry Nelson Wyman once said that um, to experience our creativity is to experience the divine. He defined God as a creative process, not a person or a, even a persona, an experience. He believes that God happens to us and between us each time we engage with one another or we engage with ideas in a way that creates something new. That is the experience of God in our midst. God, he said, is that thing that drives us to interact in, create, in creative ways that bless the world. God provides the urge toward new ideas, new insights, new relationships, and connections. Connections between um, words, between notes, between movements. God loves diversity and beauty and joy and people who feel alive. And this happens when we create something new. When we open ourselves to creativity, we open ourselves to the creator's creativity in us. And creativity, in fact, he said, is God's greatest gift to us. And when we create, we gift it back to God. In her book, Big Magic, Elizabeth Gilbert offers a non-theological approach to creativity that's very much in line with um, Wyman's process theology. She says the magic creative spirit calls us hoping that we are going to hear it and be open to it and then bring it into being, that there are creative ideas that surround us all the time and we just need to open ourselves we need to get over ourselves in order to bring it into being. And if we don't do that, she says, if we don't listen, it will find a more worthy person to bring this creative idea into being. So given the fact, well, not a fact, I'm not gonna, I'll call it a theory, a kind of a semi-theory, that the creative impulse is both sacred and magical. Why do we resist it? Why do we insist that we are not creative people? In fact, if Wyman and Gilbert are to be believed, when we refuse to create, which I believe is an act, it's often an act of self-will, we are acting counter to our very nature. So why do we refuse this gift? Why do we not want to be open to this divine creative spirit? It's complicated, but it's also very simple. Our egos, I think, tend to get in the way by confusing creativity with talent. And once that confusion has us by the tail, we can become blind to the many ways in which the creator is active in our life, helping us to create new things. So let, let's look for just a moment at some of those egocentric messages we can tell ourselves that cause us to ignore that call to be creative. First of all, um, I think we often have a narrow idea of what art is. Art is the culturally recognized product of creativity. The world of art and critique are often way too closely related to each other. Think about, um, you know, um, art critics, film critics, literature critics, dance, visual art, um, theater reviews, all that kind of thing. And 
critic, a critique is not without merit. I think um, standards of talent should and do exist. But here again, if we start confusing creativity and talent, it can stop us in our tracks. Art, I think, in its broadest sense, can be thought of as, as, the, as the product of any creative process. So when I told the story this morning, that kind of um, trickster act that the beautiful daughter does of dropping the stone, I think that was such an artful thing to do. That was a piece of art. A newly planted garden can be a piece of art. Finding a way of using the staples in her pantry to make a new recipe can be a piece of art. Golden milkweed pods can be a piece of art. It's something new that has never happened before. A day well lived can be a piece of art. When we open ourselves to exploring our creativity, we find that many of the things that we normally do in our day-to-day -day lives are part of a creative process. And when we can think of it as a creative process, we open ourselves to that holy, spiritual sense of being part of the ongoing creative process that life is. And the second thing I think that can trip us up is to focus too, too heavily on the, um, the art, the product itself, right? So when we are making something, um, when we are in the process of creating something new, that really, that feeling that we get from that, that's the real prize. It's not what results from our endeavors. It's that it's the process that we're going through. And I'm, I'm not sure how y'all feel about me saying this, but there is nothing that will, that will um, cause writer's block faster for me than thinking, oh, I wonder how these words are going to land on them on Sunday morning. <laughs> Because when I start the process of thinking about worship and uh, what I'm going to write for a sermon, I need to focus on what I need to be reminded of. What is, what is it about this topic that stirs me? What piques my interest? What helps me grow as a person? And that helps me um, engage in the process itself. Now, I will be thinking about y'all in later drafts, but um, when I begin, uh, I have to begin with what is it I need to hear. Because creating something new has to begin with honoring whatever it is within us that wants to come forth. Creativity is always first and foremost about our own well-being. It is our communion with the divine, our way of being most fully human. So if we can hold on to that image of co-creating with the divine, we become less focused on the product. Our egos, my friends, want us to see our art as a means of shoring up our self-worth, or as a means of being appreciated by others. But if we can let go of that need, if we think about expression instead of impression, it will feel safer to open up to the grace of creativity. And lastly, self-will can get in our way when we're feeling we just need to sludge through a problem or a project, even when our brains are telling us it's time to stop. If we're thinking, you know, if I just drink one more cup of strong coffee, I can get through this, then it's time to let it go for a while. 
because people who study creativity will tell you that it's only when we are relaxed and our alpha waves are cycling through our brains that we can make the kinds of connections, again, between words, between ideas, between shapes or colors or notes, that we can create something new. I took a writing class years ago uh, at Duke with this professor named Melissa Maloof, and one of her constant refrains to us was, you should start every writing project with a nap. <laughs> I love that, because as we relax, we open our creative channels to the great creator so that many gentle but powerful ideas can come through us. The Bible begins with a creation story. And this time of year, the earth is so, so energized by creating new things all around us. And we ourselves are creations. And in turn, we are meant to add to this creation story that is all around us. This space that we are now in was once open ground. And then I believe it was, what, a grocery store or a uh, convenience store. Convenience all kinds, store. All kinds of different brands. Yeah. yeah. And now it declares the presence of a faith community. Always evolving, always creative. And this sanctuary, when I came, was almost empty, and now it is full of the grace of your presence. So we have created something together this morning through our being here. Notice and appreciate what you are creating by being here. Creating something new always takes courage, and it creates encouragement from others. But with courage and encouragement, what might we create together as a community? in our individual lives and in our collective lives. The creative spirit calls to us, hoping that we are gonna be open to it, that we will hear it, that we will bring it into being. May each one of you in this room this morning and those listening online, see our lives, our very lives as creative acts and allow them to become works of art. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.